And here's Gemma in her natural environment washing dishes. Okay. Good gag. <laughs> Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog and uh, we're mashed in for the stout today and Gemma's going to be casking some of the best bitter. So, if I just turn these off for a second, I'm at the cask washer. Uh, now I built this whilst I was at IVB. This is one of the few pieces of equipment that those bastards never managed to steal from me. and. Uh, the only drawback with this cask washer, apart from its plastic tanks and steel frame, we will be upgrading in the future, but at the moment it does the job just fine. So the only drawback is that we've got these, they're actually wardrobe rails, clothes rails, to hold the casks on the tanks and the one in the acid hasn't fared very well at all. In fact, it's just gone totally rusty. So what I'm going to do today is replace that with some stainless steel out of the scrap bin, of course. So you may recall when we uh, retrofitted these tanks over here, we took off these handles from each tank. And, well, kind of, kind of a good fit, wouldn't you say? The side of a tank. Even that way, it will work a little bit better, I reckon, than the flat bars. So, I've taken two of these down into the workshop whilst we're running off the mashtum, and I'll show you what I've got in mind. It's colder out here than it is in cold room. So, I've already started to process the steel for this and uh, I've got a little sketch it's not fantastic it's just as simple as that and they're the measurements that I'm going for and we're basically going to have the two bars like so sat in the uh, cask washer in that direction with the spray ball coming up in the center and to hold it all into position I've got a bit more scrap metal here out of the scrap bin it was a piece of bar I've just cut it in half it doesn't have to be perfect it can be rough as our souls as they say and this will be welded onto each end to keep them apart the required distance so they slot into the cask washer perfectly and then this also can just be lifted up and pulled out very quickly and very easily so we can sit something different on there like buckets or corny kegs which often want to be fully immersed into the, uh, the cleaning fluid while it's being washed. So all I've got to do is put some little end caps on here, weld that section on there and we should have new uh, New cask hoists, no, cask holder, cask holders, yeah, cask holders will do, for the cask washer. So let's get the welder out and get it done. So Bosch, power on, over here to the argon tank, argon on, and then down here, we'll just pull out the foot pedal, and I'm guessing, you know what, 70 amps sounds good enough to me. I'll just bump it up to 75 a bit to speed things up. It's a bit cold in here today. Uh, tungsten, 1.6 thorinated. Looks good enough to me. In fact, that might be a 2.4 actually. Either way, I'm not changing it out. It's rough and quick welding today. Even though it's going to be hygienic on the outside, we're not bothered about any coking on the inside because that's going to be a sealed unit once this is finished. Right folks, I am going to cheat a little bit here, so in order to put end caps onto these pieces of steel, I'm not actually interested in cutting end caps out of any scrap metal um, and trying to fit them that way. Instead, 
I'm just going to take the scrap metal that I've got out of the scrap bin and I'm just going to tack it straight on in situ and then cut round it afterwards. So there we go, that's one side done. Like I say, this can be quite rough and ready. Doesn't really have to be like the best, the best piece of welding that I've ever done. There we go. And then all I'm going to do is take the grinder and I'm simply going to grind off those ends, these sides, and then finish the weld and we'll have a simple, quick, easy end cap. Bit of a cheat, bit of rough and ready. You wouldn't want to be doing this to anything you was fabricating to sell, but it's a, it's a workaround that's uh, suitable for the job at hand. There we go, as you can see, that's not bad at all. And if I pop a quick weld on that, the battery might die on the uh, camera, so I'll be as quick as possible. We're below one bar, if there's such a thing. Right then, let's go for it. Just like that, folks. That worked out pretty quick. And there we go. We've got one relatively rough and ready end cap, but it's an end cap nonetheless. And if I want to, I can clean that up with the grinder. And here is the finished article. So let's go and see. Yeah, it's cooled down enough for me to pick up. Let's go and see if it actually fits. Okay, let's see if it fits then. It's got two choices as they say. Let's pull these rusty old bars out. They can just go, they can go to the tip now. Push and lift, that's it. And then this, it's probably still hot. Yeah, it's still hot. So I'll just dip both ends into the acid to cool them down and then this should fit straight across there. How's that? It certainly looks the part, doesn't it? Is it going to fall off? I don't think it is. I think we've cracked it, Jem. Do you want to put one on? The only thing I'm worried about is maybe the uh, spray ball's too deep, but we can change that. If we need to. Push it back a bit. There we go. Yeah. It's a bit more in the in the uh, tank as well, isn't it? Beautiful. Right, so we're coming to the end of the brew day now. The cask washer doodly do works perfectly. And uh, I've also ordered from the Tinterwebs some PT100 probes to replace the ones that weren't working very well on the pilot kit and uh, 
I've got one of them hooked up onto this ink bird. It's a 12 volt ink bird this one and I'm using it for testing purposes because obviously I can't electrocute myself with it. And I noticed that, uh, well it wasn't working correctly. So it kind of had the same symptoms as the other one. And it turns out you need to add a little jumper wire between pins four and five it must just be to ground one of the uh, one of the pins for reference and all of a sudden it worked absolutely flawlessly and the temperature is accurate so I'm going to go into the control panel maybe tomorrow not today and just see if putting a little jumper cable across those two terminals helps on the other ones with the K-type thermocouples if not and it's going to be a case of desoldering and popping these little beauties in position and I've also got some new um, motorized valves and these are a huge improvement on the old green ones that I was buying from China don't get me wrong as you can tell these are also from Yulong Ding Dong in, uh, in China land but the good thing about these is you've got the yellow and green wire it's not earth that is your ground wire let's say your negative and then you either swap the polarity going through the brown or the blue to open and close the valves so it's going to take a little bit of jiggling around on the uh, in the control panels to figure this out but it's easily done very easily done and what I like about these is this collet so the whole system comes off and you can install the pipe in situ and if anything fails on it you can just replace the box or if you need to gain access to put insulation on you can do that and then come back in and of course install the control box to the back of it very easily. I'm just going to open this quick test up because we don't need that on all night. That's done its job. Uh, and then one more thing I want to touch upon before I go. So uh, obviously the filter, the duplex filter in the pilot kit um, didn't work because it got bunged up because the dip tube uh, only has that trub dam to prevent any blockages which I don't think is sufficient I don't think it's a good design actually so what I'm gonna do is uh, I've taken the trub dam out and I've replaced it with a fitting to which this will screw onto this is a one inch or three quarter inch should I say BSP 316 stainless steel socket and uh, I've taken some of the perforated mesh that we used to make the false bottom in the mash tun and I've manhandled it and had it in the vise and I've managed to make what is almost passable as a cylinder. In fact I can improve upon that a little bit as well. Then what I'm going to do is chop this socket in half, I'm going to weld one half onto that end. I'm going to weld the other half onto this end and then I'm going to take a uh, three quarter inch threaded nipple and blank one end off and square it and then we'll use that as a blanking screw on that end. This end will screw straight into the uh, tap adapter where the trub dam was and we've got our own stainless steel bazooka tube made out of rigid really strong uh, perforated mesh and of course with the cap on the end we can undo that to flush the tube when we take it out for cleaning and this will pre-filter all of the liquid into the duplex system which I might change frankly it's a little bit bulky and then if that works then uh, we'll just use the duplex system for filtering into the plate chiller and we don't need to have an extra filter then into the pump because any particles that make it through here 
which is a one millimeter hole I think 1.5 millimeter pitch possibly two anything that makes it through there is going to be small enough for the pump to be able to deal with but I'm not finishing that off today that's another job altogether so it just remains for me to set up the kit to turn on automatically in the morning and then when I get here we'll be able to do the pail this week's been a really productive week so we've put we're going to have made six beers quite frankly we've done the stout we've done the what was that one uh, we've done the bitter we've done a, a vacant gesture proof of concept and of course sat happily over here is the plum porter and uh, we're also making the pail tomorrow but Gemma's cast one of the bitters and she's doing these two vacants as well tomorrow so we will have FVs 1, 2 and 3 free next week if we want to fill them up probably won't though we'll probably just leave it a week now this is all the spent grain we've got for the farmer to come and collect tomorrow afternoon I think his sheep or cows are going to have a good chow down on that so that's it I'm going to wrap it up just one more thing to add I've just been up and uh, met another subscriber in the pub he's come over from Mansfield Forest Grump is his handle if you like so uh, he's been meaning to come over for a while and he's been watching the vlogs for six years now it's a long time isn't it so I'd just like to say hey up mate I know you're probably watching this one and it was a pleasure to meet you sir so uh, that's it folks I'm gonna wrap it up and we'll see you on tomorrow's vlog when we polish off a brewing marathon with a, uh, a batch of Harrison's Pale. We'll see you then. Cheers.